guys and welcome to the Sunderland vs Lincoln match review. So Sunderland have beat Lincoln by three goals to one and what was probably the best performance, particularly in the first half anyway, I've seen at the stadium light in some time and I know we only said that the other week uh, when we did play Doncaster um, and that was a great, great performance as well. But yesterday's first half performance in particular was just, it was something special, it really was something special but we'll get into the game. So first and foremost, a massive sort of well done to the Lincoln fans because they were absolutely excellent. They brought over 3,000 plus fans to the Stadium Light, which is absolutely incredible. Uh, they were constantly singing throughout and just a really good group and set of fans. So very much uh, well done to them. But uh, we did win by three goals to one, uh, unfortunately for them, unfortunately for us. And our lineup was as follows. So we did have uh, McLaughlin in goal across the back three. We had Ozturk, Willis and Flanagan returning to the lineup as Lynch dropped out through injury. On the right-hand side of that sort of the wing-back role, we had O'Neill, Hume on the left as the wing-back as well. In the middle, we had Power and we had Dobson. And then we had Maguire, we had Gooch and we had Charlie White as well. So getting into the first half where, as I say, it was an absolute amazing performance. Everything was inch perfect, particularly the pressing, which is something a lot of fans are um, speaking about right now because that's exactly what it was. The the height of intensity and the pressing was absolutely phenomenal. It was just non-stop um, how we were getting right in their faces. Uh, we, we weren't being bullied off the ball. Power and Dobson were excellent in, the, in that sense. They, they, them two in the middle were just absolutely bullying them, particularly Dobson, who for me, I'm going to say it already, was my man of the match. Of course, there was a lot of other candidates, but I think Dobson probably had his best game and his best performance in the Sunderland shirt so far in his son or at least during his Sunderland career so far because he was absolutely excellent breaking up the play moving the ball on and he was just constantly tracking back getting forward tracking back getting forward and he was absolutely excellent in that sense and like I said there were just so many times where Power and Dobson were just absolutely bullying their midfield just not obviously fouling but you know aggressive enough in a professional manager to sort of shove him off the ball, nick the ball off him, some brilliantly timed challenges and then knocking the ball on and moving, moving us forward. That was just absolutely great to see. And also how it was absolutely outstanding. There was a couple of times where Lincoln did try and get us on the counter-attack and before you know it, we had nine men behind the ball. That's how quickly we were all tracking back as a team and as a unit because the shape was so inch perfect for us. And not even overdoing it because there was times where we had plenty of our players going forward. We'd lose the ball in the edge of that box and they try and bump forward. And then I thought, shit, I thought we were up there a minute ago. Do you know what I mean? And we had nine players behind the ball. It just shows the grit and determination the lads were putting in. They put absolutely 110% particularly into that first half performance, which I will move on to the second very soon. But we did break the deadlock. Anyway, we did break the deadlock, and it was Tom Flanagan. A corner was put in, he got a deft touch on it, but it was a small enough touch to knock it past the keeper, and it just bobbled into the top corner, which was really nice for him, because he did have a very decent game um, yesterday as well. Again, mainly in the first half. I'm going to keep saying that, because once we get into the second half, you'll understand why I keep saying that. Um, but yeah, so we kept on going, kept pushing, and then the second goal just epitomised the pressing and the intensity that we did bring uh, to the game. Maguire was rushing um, uh, rushing their defender down, he'd give it to the keeper, the keeper completely messed up his clearance, it ricocheted off Maguire, fell towards Gooch, and it was a sort of 50-50 header, 50-50 tussle between Gooch and their defender. Gooch won the battle, I think Gooch is claiming the goal and managed to loop the keeper and put it in the back of the net. Um, but again, I think that's brilliant because what Lincoln were trying to do, and it's clear to see from the off, they were trying to play out from the back. And at somewhere like the stage of my life, we, we can't allow that to happen. Particularly at home, we can't allow them to start playing it out from the back. So it was great to see that the likes of Maguire and Gooch and Wyke, they were all taking initiative and just thinking, no, we're not letting you do that. Not in our back garden. And we were just absolutely rushing them. They, they couldn't, they, they, we didn't give them a chance to think. We pressed them that much. It was insane. It was every 50-50, every we were winning every 50-50, every, every second ball, everything. which It was just falling in our way. And it was because of the amount of energy and intensity we were using throughout that first half. And we t and we topped it off, capped it off at uh, half-time to make it 3-0 with Lyndon Gooch again. It was a, one just big direct looped ball by John McLaughlin. The keeper just completely done their defence right over the top. Gooch then first time just slips it into the bottom right-hand corner to make it 3-0 and it was the absolutely perfect half. It was very reminiscent of the Scunthorpe game last year where we did win 3-0 but again it was similar to Scunthorpe game in the sense that we got it to 3-0 at half time with a, a brilliant performance and then the second half just let us down a little bit. Um, so what I mean by that, so we did go into half time of course 3-0. Second half, uh, you could tell that it definitely taken its toll on the lads because like I say the intensity and the pressure and the pressing was so high 
And you need to remember that I think was it we played three or four games in the space of like nine days or something like that, which is a hell of a lot. And it and it really will be that you know that they'll be feeling it. And to give the amount they did give, particularly in that first half, considering the amount of games they've played and we've haven't really rotated too much in terms of personnel in the side. You know, that's that was an absolutely excellent showing. So I can kind of forgive them for for you know dropping off and taking the foot off the gas a little bit in that second half. But I think the main issue was in the first half, our back line, our back three in particular, half the time we were literally on the halfway line, which we don't really see. Usually we're a little bit too deep, and that's how we ask. We're asking for them to attack us. That that's usually what the case is. But we were so high. Our defensive line was so high, which I like to see because it just meant we had constant pressure on him, which I, I prefer to see because we have the likes of Willis who has the pace to catch up if a ball is pinged over behind. But um, we, we took that risk and it worked perfectly in the first half. But the second, when we came out, our defensive line seemed to drop back 10, 15 yards and we were a little bit more sluggish. Although in saying that, I think I've seen a lot of people say that we were terrible in the second half, which I don't think it's, I don't really think it's fair only because I think we had to compare it to the first half because I think the first half was such a 10 out of 10 performance that anything below that's going to look really poor when it, when in reality yes I think Lincoln had the better of the second half but I don't even think we were that bad there was a couple of defensive shaky moments particularly early on in that second half but other than that I think it was just a generally scrappy affair we allowed Lincoln loads of possession um, without them creating you know mammoth amounts they did create the odd chance here and there but so did we still power hit the bar at one point um Maguire who had an excellent game did come off and brought what more on um, which I think was a really good substitution but of course Lincoln did get their consolation um and th this was a bit of a talking point as well because for me although I'm happy for you know the Lincoln fans they had so much to shout about because they were excellent yesterday um it shouldn't have been a goal it shouldn't have been a goal it was a Ball played sort of in behind. Denver Hume seemed to have it under control. He was almost trying to usher it out. Um, and he's been blatantly shoved over. Blatantly shoved over. Uh, the shot slipped past McLaughlin. But then Walker, who's in an offside position, taps it in. So neither the foul nor the offside were given. So, you know, it just it just shows, you know. And to be fair, it wasn't one of those games where there were loads of critical moments for the referee. So that's what's more annoying because the one real incident he has to judge and he's completely cocked it up it just shows how terrible the referees are and the officials are in this league which we already knew anyway but yeah they had the goal they had so much to shout about which is nice for Lincoln I guess but it's just a shame we couldn't have kept the clean sheet and we should have had a clean sheet essentially but um but yeah so on, on the whole it, it was a good it was a good job it was a job well done and that's what five undefeated now for Parkinson which you know I think there's a lot of things to consider. Do I still, you know, do I still think Pox in, in the long run is the man for Sunderland? No, I, I don't. Of course, but whoever is at the helm, I will always support regardless. You know, in terms of I want him to succeed. It's just a few weeks ago, after a terrible couple of months under him, it, it, I, I couldn't see it, and I still can't really see long-term success under Parkinson. But I will always want him to do well. I'm not sat here hoping he doesn't do well because I said Parkinson out. Do you know what I mean? That isn't how it works. Of course, I wish him all the success in the world, and I hope it does come with us. Of course, I do, um, and I hope he does prove a lot of people wrong. I hope that does happen, and hope this is a turning point, if it is to be a turning point, because now we are one point away from playoffs with the game in hand. We're one point, sorry, one point. We're six points off second place, and we're nine points for, from top of the league, which is absolute insanity considering how bad the last two months have been. Forwards. We've been absolutely shambolic, losing game after game after game, and we somehow still, just after a five-game unbeaten run, which consists consisted of three draws and two wins, that's lifted us to being so close to the top two. Do you know what I mean? That's madness, and I don't know whether that just means that, or it just clearly shows the dire quality of this league, because everyone's beating everyone. That's the thing. Everyone's beating everyone at the minute, and a lot of the teams at the top are starting to drop off a little bit as well, so maybe this is the perfect opportunity for us to hit some form because we are playing well and it's also a coincidence that you know the second mcgeady has been brought out of the lineup we seem to be playing a lot better you know what you know some performances since mcgeady have gone haven't exactly been excellent but they've certainly been better without mcgeady um you know and i can't pin everything on aiden mcgeady of course i can't but you need to consider that as a factor but again a great great three points my man of the match was george dobson have to give a shout out to willis as well who i thought was absolutely magnificent gooch was great running his socks off 
Uh, Maguire, exactly the same. A lot of people have given Lyndon Gooch man of the match, but for me it was just Dobson because he was just an absolute different beast yesterday. An absolute different beast. Something we just haven't seen from him all season long, which is, which is of course, is great to see because he is only a young lad as well. Charlie White, you know, I think at, at, for, the, for a sort of target man and the hold-up role, he did quite well. Um, of course, referees aren't going to give him anything because he, the amount of times he gets battered per game and doesn't get anything, or it'll go the other way when the other defenders smashed him. I've just come to expect that with him now, but that isn't his fault. But he is coming deep, coming, you know, collecting the ball, knocking it on, and he's doing that very well. I just don't, we're just not finding him in the box. It was, it was blatant to see in the, in the second half of the game really that he was very, very much isolated, a little bit like Grig, like we have said in the past. But um, I think in the first half when we were, we did have that intensity. We had plays around him that was bringing him into the game. Whereas the second half, because we dropped deep so much, he was left so isolated. There was no one in around him, and because everyone else had dropped deeper, and he remained up top. We'd hoof the ball up top, and he was winning headers. He was winning headers to knock on, but there was no one there. So that so that must be quite a frustrating half, particularly for Charlie Wack. And you know, I, I, th I think in this summer we definitely need this summer, this uh, this January transfer window. We definitely need another striker, um, because I think with the way we play, if we play the way we did in the in that first half. Plus, with an additional quality striker, we will rinse teams. Absolutely rinse teams. And I know we we, won, we were winning 3 0 anyway at half time without any real sort of fully fledged strikers scoring. So imagine you had another striker, a, a really decent quality striker alongside the likes of Maguire and Gooch as well. That could be a beastly combination. But that's by the by. So we did win by three goals to one. My feet are still firmly on the ground, but it does look like we are turning a corner somewhat. We do have Wickham up next, which is proving to be a massive game now. If we win that, we could end up seeing ourselves in the playoffs come the end of that day. But that'll be it, guys. Let me know in the comments what did you think about the result. And if you have enjoyed this video, please hit the like button for me. It'd be massively, massively appreciated. And subscribe to the channel if you're not already to become a fully-fledged member of the Sony Army. But for now, you take care and stay jabbing.